Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company here at Dubai Watch Week 2023 with a man who was a name brand before he was a name brand, Jean-Claude Viver. Sir, thank you so much for speaking with us. Hello, you're welcome. Exciting times. You're famous for building up big brands, but now you're building a small brand under your own name. Where did the idea for Viver watches come from? You know, I have the first brand I have built was called Blanta which I bought for 22,000 US dollars. And why did I buy it for that price? Because it was, it had no value. Because Blancpain, when we bought it, they had stopped to produce watches 22 years before we bought it. And there was nothing left, no factory, no people, no machines, no product, no nothing. We just paid for the right to take the name. So we had to build Blancpain from scratch. No factory. We had to rent a factory. No products. We had to bring a collection. No movements. No dials. No nothing. So when people say, I have been used to develop big brands, no, I have learned to develop first a no brand. Blancpain was a no brand because nobody knew the brand. If you stop during 20 or 23 years to produce watches under the name Blancpain, don't be astonished that after 25 years, nobody knows you. People cannot know you if you don't use the brand. So Blancpain was my first experience building a brand from A to Z. And this experience was so rich, was so happy, was so uh, emotional that I never, never could accept the fact that I sold. And because I never, I still cannot accept that I sold, I was only, had only one purpose. I said, one day I want to finish my job at Blancpain, but it will not be at Blancpain because Blancpain belongs to Swatch Group and they will never sell it to me, but I will end my job under the name Beaver. So now my brand Blancpain is the end process of Blancpain. <laughs> Fantastic, and what a watch. Your first model, Carrion Tourbillon. Did you design this yourself? You and your son? It was designed by my son and myself a little bit, yes. The major part, I would say, is my son. And I gave the little, you know, like when you cook, you put a little bit of salt or pepper. But the main cooking was done by my son. So now the watch itself is extremely advanced. Uh, minute repeater, carry-on, tourbillon but wearable at 42 millimeters. Tell me a little bit about how the fit of the watch was important to you, because it's not common to see a watch this complicated that's also this wearable. Yes, you're absolutely right, and that's one of our major tasks, is to make a luxury product that is wearable from all the aspects, from the weight, from the, the resistance to the scratches, from the, the water, by the way, the watch is water resistant to five uh, atmosphere. So you can, in, practically, you can go to 50 meters. So that's also very unusual. So we are uh, really, we try to make whatever we produce to be wearable, to make a sense. Like we always try not to copy the past, but to take our inspiration in the past. Speaking of inspiration, is that the reason, the historical importance of the tourbillon, that you decided to make your first watch a tourbillon? We decided to make our first watch the most difficult. One of the last one I did with Blancpain to make it a minute repeater. And then we said a minute repeater is not enough. We should make a, a carillon. It means with three hammers and with three sounds. And then we said we should go ahead and make it automatic with a micro rotor in order to keep the movement relatively small. So we really improved a lot the basic movements and it's not a copy of the basic movement, it's an inspiration of the, uh, 
of the uh, um, the original first movement. So now the watch you've got right here is the result of years of ambition coming together, but it's going to remain rare. What is the number of watches you're looking to make per year? Because I know you're not chasing volume. I, uh, we are chasing, we are chasing uh, <laughs> quality. And if you chase quality to the extreme, to the extreme, then you will realize that per watchmaker, you can eventually get out one maximum one and a half watches. It means in norm normally it will take you nine months to make one watch. Yes. So in, in a year you can make one and a half. That is now how many people are we? <laughs> in production, production, we and decoration, the two together, we are roughly 15 people. And how many watches can we produce this year? This year, which is not finished, I hope, I expect that we will be able to make 13 pieces. For the whole year? For the whole year. And the objective for the budget next year is to bring out 20. And the budget 2030, which is in seven years, is to bring out 60. So we have a very ambitious program. But although the program is ambitious for us, it's still a very low-key program because it takes time. It, take, it is time. You know, what we try and what we succeed to make is whatever is invisible in a watch should be mastered as if it would be visible. So the screws are black polish although nobody will see the screw nobody will care if your screw is black polished or not and it will not change the quality of the watch but it changes our concept our concept is that the invisible parts must be mastered as if they would be visible that's a lot of integrity i gotta say so now you have to communicate this to the public people see a photo online they don't know what they're getting do you go straight to the client or do you have dealers? Is, is it? No, we have, we have dealers. We have appointed seven dealers to cover the world. One in Japan, one in America, one in the Middle East, one in, uh, uh, in the Southeast Asia. So you see, we have six, seven dealers and they cover for us the whole world and they have the mission this year to distribute or to sell 15 but it will be it will be 13 only 13 pieces and next year 20 and so on now you have clearly a passion for this because you don't need to be attending dubai watch week showing the watch no you don't need to be here no we don't talk a little bit about that passion because a lot of people know that you managed big brands in the past but building up a small brand is a product of love is that like the love you feel for your son, the love you feel for watchmaking, a little bit of both? It's the love I have for both, of course, but it's mainly the love of life. I love life. I love love. I love love. And all you need is love. That's where the Beatles, 1967. Famous man once said. They said it already in 67. All we need is love. And that's the perfect expression of love because the perfect expression of love is art there is no art without love and love is the result of art and we are in the watchmaking art and we respect the rules and the major rule for us in the high-end watches is to create or to give birth to a soul we cannot just have a watch that tells you what time it is. That's not enough. You can have a quartz watch. But we want a watch that you can say, I wear love on my wrist. I wear a soul on my wrist. And this soul is protecting me. This soul is helping me in my life. That's the role of our watches. So our role is much larger than just tell us what time it is. 
who cares? We care about love, what the watch gives you. And finally, if people want to order one of these watches, how do they reach out to you? How they reach me? Yes. They can reach me through our retailers. We have, for instance, uh, in America or in, in, in the Middle East, we have Siddiqui here. All these, all these, there are seven. The seven retailers we have in the world, they distribute, they communicate, they tell their customers, I have something very special. I will only get two pieces for this year. Are you interested to have one? Come and have a dinner with Mr. Beaver. He will explain you through this sales approach. We find customers, but it is a one-to-one. -one. <laughs> oh, that, and all we need is 15 customers for this year. So, so there you go. Order a Jean-Claude Biver watch and get dinner with Jean-Claude Biver. That's the best sales pitch I've ever heard. Of course, of course. I, I said that there was an auction about our prototype. On the, the prototype, the watch that came out from the prototype has been sold, is sold for 550,000 US and on the auction it reached 1.3 million and I said I was present at the auction I said whoever goes and will get the watch you will also get a private dinner in my home with a special Ikem wine from 1949 unfortunately the guy who got the auction we, I only know his name, Joe, but I don't know his address. I don't know how I can, how I can get rid of him. Uh, so for the moment, the wine is in my cellar still, and the private dinner is waiting. But the day he, I hear from him, the invitation is still valid. All right. So there might be some wine for the taking if you're into a watch like this, and I can't imagine who wouldn't be. Mr. Bivera, thank you so much. You are welcome. Thank you. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023. We are at Beauvais. I'm here with Global Sales Director Romain. Thank you so much for showing us these Thank time you pieces. Very much. Thank you. This is a real treat because every single watch I see here is a Grail watch. Uh, why don't we start on your right and work over to me. Tell me about these watches because each one is distinct and spectacular. Thank you very much, Tim. Very nice meeting you. And you told me that you love complications, so I want to show you some of the complication timepieces from Beauvais today. So the first timepiece I want to show you is actually a special edition that we are launching for the show for Dubai Watch Week. Uh, it's, uh, it's a Dubai special edition, 10 timepieces only in the world. This timepiece, as you can feel, is very light because it's made of titanium, sunblasty titanium. The, the dial is very special as it's a black meteorite dial. And you have a, a combination of complication on this timepiece, which is the jumping hour minute retrograde. It's a very high complication timepiece because the synchronization of the, of the jumping hour and minute retrograde is very hard to achieve. So only very few brands, very few watchmakers in the world can, uh, can make like an accurate timepiece with these complications. This is a five days per reserve timepiece, 42 millimeters case. That is very compact. Beauvais watches tend to be very generously sized. That's a lot of power reserve for a very power intensive complication in a smaller case. You're right. And, and you know very well the brand. So all, all our timepieces are very long per reserve. It's something that we defend at Beauvais, and actually the way we achieve this is only with one barrel, but just thanks to the finishing on the movement, we can extend the power reserve. So it's a very strong element of the brand, and I think it gives a proof of the, of the quality of finishing we, 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 we try to achieve on each of the timepieces, from the entry-level collections to the very high complication timepieces. And it has a fascinating media-blasted surfacing. It's a very different kind of matte finish. Yeah, you're right. So it's a titanium timepiece because we wanted this timepiece to be very light. We use two types of, uh, of titanium, a polished titanium and a sunblasted titanium. So this one is the sunblasted version and it gives a more modern aspect, more sporty, uh, sporty aspect to, the, to this collection and to this timepiece. Yes. Is this a limited edition? It's 10 timepieces only. 10 timepieces. Yes. And are they sold out already? Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty Fair much. enough. <laughs> So now, moving on, we have an example, I believe, of your Amadeo case, which is really fascinating to me. 
um, but tell, tell our viewers what that means. Yes, yeah, so actually this is the real traditional design of Beauvais with the bow at 12 and the crown at 12. The inspiration behind this timepiece is actually to have the design of a pocket watch when you come and we attach a strap on the, on the pocket watch. So this is the, what we call the flurry type of case. This case is also very special because if you look from the side, this is as a writing desk shape of case. So it's tilted from one end to the other. Yes, you're right. You're right. Totally right. This timepiece is a timepiece that we launched this year. It's a Virtuoso 11. And the particularity of this timepiece is that it's a full skeleton. So it's the first skeleton, full skeleton that the brand has ever created. Everything on the bridges, even like the back of the bridges, are fully engraved by hand in-house by our artisan. So as you know, like every, we do everything in-house at Beauvais, every single component. The, the only components we are not doing at, at Beauvais are the strap and the rubies in the movement. But everything else is made in-house by our manufacturer for Beauvais, yes. So this is both skeletonized and engraved. It also has a flying tourbillon and a long power reserve? You're totally right. So that's the high complication. We have a flying tourbillon on this timepiece with a 10 days power reserve. Yes, and what you see actually at 12, it's what we call a spherical differential. And the spherical differential is a patented system by Beauvais to improve the efficiency of the winding system. Because with 10 days per reserve, it could take a bit of time to wind the timepiece. Yes. To avoid this and to make it very practical for our collectors, we have created this special system that uh, improves the efficiency of the winding system by two. And approximately how many watches do you make per year, just to give people an idea of your scale? So we say we make about 1,000 timepieces in a year, so it really depends on the launches we're going to do. So usually it's between 800 to 1,200 timepieces in a year. So it's like an average of 1,000 timepieces. Are they full customization? Yes, yes. We actually do about 30% of our production for bespoke customizations, yes. So a lot of unique pieces for our collectors. Now this watch may not be unique, but it's certainly scarce, and it's an award winner. Egi Doro, I think it was in 2018, the Recital right. 22. Tell me about this watch in the Tellarium and what that means. So that's correct. So this timepiece is a very high competition timepiece. It won the award of the Egi Doro in the uh, GPG 2018, you're right. And since we can only produce five to six timepieces in a year, so this movement is very complicated to do. And it's a movement that is limited to 60 pieces only. So we don't limit by the... By, by the color of the dial or by, by the choice of case that we're going to use, we limit by the movement. So at the end of the day, there will be 60 movement only. Why we do this is also because we are doing a lot of bespoke, a lot of personalization, and we want to keep it very limited, so we had to do it by the movement. So this timepiece features some high complications, and as you mentioned it, the first one is what we call the tellurium. The tellurium is when you have the representation of the sun, the earth, and the moon. So what you see at six is the tourbillon, and the tourbillon represents the sun. At 12 is the Earth, and uh, the Earth is going to turn on itself in 24 hours. And around the Earth, I don't know if you can see well very, very well on the camera, but you have the Moon, and the Moon is going to turn around the Earth. Okay. How to read the time on this timepiece is actually pretty easy. Like in the middle of the two hands, the two arrows, oh, yes. you have numbers. So this is the hour, and uh, the minute hand is on the left side. It's a minute retrograde. So it, goes at 60 and then it flies back. On the right side of the timepiece is the power reserve indicator, nine days power reserve. And here, beside the tourbillon, you have the date. How can we have the date beside the tourbillon? It's because at the back of the timepiece, if you click the timepiece, you actually have a perpetual calendar. This watch has all the toys. Yeah, so actually it's a very, very high competition timepiece. And to make it very practical for our collectors, because this is also very important, we have created here a little pusher at 12. I don't know if you know this, Tim. But like if your timepiece stop for, let's say, three days, you just have to wind again your timepiece and you press three times on the, on the pusher and it sets the calendar automatically. And every indication of the calendar just moves in sync. You press yeah. it three times, it's going to be three days, three jumps of the moon, just like that. You're totally right, yes. Very cool. And what is the price point approximately for that watch? So the price point of this particular timepiece in Swiss franc is 540,000 Swiss franc. Excluding and approximately how long would it take to make if I were to order one today? So we only make five to six timepieces in a year. Uh, so usually like if you want to order a new timepiece now, it should take around five to six months to provide one. Outstanding, worth the wait, definitely worth the wait.
Now tell me what we have right here. We have a full sapphire case, metal lugs, flying tourbillon, and a lot of color. Yes, you're right. So with this timepiece, we wanted to create something very modern, very sporty for our collectors, because we realized that we had a, a lot of collectors who really appreciate the traditional side of Beauvais, but we have some collectors who fell in love with the brand and they have like a lot of timepieces from us. So they wanted to, to find something also like with a, a, a little modern touch on, the, on our collections. And so we have created this timepiece for this. So this is the first time we create a full Safari case. And on this timepiece, again, like a very high complication timepiece with a tourbillon at six. What you see at 3 p.m. is the universal time with a second time zone selector. At 9 p.m. you have a three-dimensional moon phase painted by hand with superluminova. So it glows in the dark at 9 p.m. And at 12, the dial with the hour and minute hands on a quartz dial and on a dome again. So everything is, we play with the, with the dimension in the movement and that's also why we are creating this writing desk shape of case so we can play with the dimension in the movement. So everything is done on domes. So it's really like a three dimension timepiece. The last complication you, had, you have on this timepiece is actually the power reserve indicator. I don't know if you know where the power reserve indicator is, Tim. Let me see if I can track down the power reserve indicator here. This will be a little pop quiz. Then I'm going to look up there to see You're right. it. You're there right. We so go. we make full use of the Sapphire case and we included the power reserve indicator totally at the top of the case of the timepiece. Outstanding. And the finishing's world class. I mean, this really is second to none. So if people want to learn more about Beauvais, you don't advertise. So where do they go to learn more? So it's not that we don't advertise, but you're right. So the, 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 the Beauvais collector is a luxury connoisseur. Yes. So we are not just like uh, investing so much in marketing, but our collectors know the brand and like the level of collectors we are targeting know the brand. Uh, we are, yes, we are, we are talking this, this very special crowd who is, has a lot of education about watchmaking. They know what they are, what they are buying and they know what they are looking for. The, the brand has a very long history. As you know, we have been created in 1822. And, uh, and the brand has been created by the three Beauvais brothers. So they were Swiss, uh, Swiss brothers. And they learned watchmaking in, uh, actually in London, even though they were Swiss. And one of the brothers, Edouard Beauvais, went on a journey to Guangdong in China and uh, with the three pocket watches with him. Uh, and very, very quickly actually managed to, to sell these timepieces for the equivalent of what we say, like $1 million today. Wow. Yes. So he realized that actually like uh, people really appreciate the art of watchmaking in China and he told his brother we need to create some timepieces back in Switzerland and I will sell them as well in China. So of course like Beauvais was creating watches in, in the manufacturing in Switzerland and was producing for the entire world but Edouard himself stayed in China and he became the official watchmaker of the Qing Dynasty Emperor. Why the brand was so popular in China is because actually Beauvais was the first brand to arrive in China. So now until today, like if you go to the Forbidden City in China, you still have like some Bove clocks and some Bove oh, pocket watches. Cool. Thank you so much, Roman. I really appreciate this. this Tim, thank you very much. Total pleasure. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023 with a legend in the business, Mr. Christophe Claret. Sir, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Sorry. Now tell me a little bit about your company, because you've been the go-to guy for high complications for decades now. How did it start and what are you doing today? Um, I, I speak a little bit about my company. I start my company, uh, my manufacturer uh, in um, 1989 and uh, I work uh, in uh, 30 years for 65 brand different. I realize uh, 120 caliber for them, the most important was the tourbillon. And more, more, more complicated. And uh, 12 years ago, I started my brand in 2009. Uh, and uh, I started my brand and I produced some different products of my brand. Uh, you can see here uh, four collection, extreme piece, traditional piece, woman product, and gaming watch. And uh, now I show uh, about uh, traditional piece, a very interesting piece because it was uh, for to push honor about Sheikh Zayed. For me, I, I very fascinated about the history of uh, uh, this gentleman. He was prince of peace of uh, uh, here. Uh, it seemed beard Abu Dhabi was desert and he arrived to 
to have a, 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 to realize the peace in the country, we start the city, and this is why I want to uh, to go for this peace. When you look to peace, you can see Czech Zayed with Falcon, two Falcon because he loves the Falcon, and with two Dromedaire, uh and the castle of him in the desert. And when I, I push the animation, sorry, you can see the animation. It's an automaton. Yes, automaton, four automaton. And Westminster, minute repeat. And Westminster, the cathedral gong, and tourbillon, and the automat painting by hand, miniature painting by hand. It was very challenging to do this because uh, for the to have face very exactly the same of Sheikh Zayed, you need to do again three times. But to have the because in painting miniature is very complicated for to realize exactly the the the. Uh, the reflect of the personality of the Sheikh Zayed. And so the watch is 45 millimeters in titanium to conduct the sound better? Yeah, titanium cut five. And because here I prefer titanium or white gold better. Uh, I prefer the titanium because it's better for the son and and, uh, and uh, it's waterproof, pretty and matter. So this is a piece unique? Piece unique, yes. Do you do custom at Christophe Claret? If someone wants a custom enamel Westminster carry on minute repeater tourbillon. Could could this be made with another picture or another? Yes, of course. Uh, we do. Uh, we work for different uh, legend people, uh, and um, we can see uh, some piece unique we do for other personality, other legend in the world. Uh, you we do uh, uh, with uh, a lot of different person. Napoleon, for example, uh, we do for for Alamo, yes. America. Uh, with David Coquette and the fa very famous history of uh, uh, America. We do uh, uh, some uh, other uh, for uh, Empire Ottoman, etc. And so now the watch right here, this is a flying tourbillon model, um, very light for its size, but also a watch that's one part about the movement, one part about the dial. I think they share billing here, whereas the Angelico is all about the movement. Tell me about this watch. Yes, it was very challenging, challenging piece because we worked seven years for to relieve this piece. Because the challenge it was to introduce the detente escapement inside the traditional inside the tourbillon. Uh, you you need to send uh, in the first time uh, in the past uh, we he do a chronometer de marine uh, and uh, why he do a chronometer with tourbillon with the and the for the precision uh, for chronometer because. Use this for the um, boat. Uh, George V do a challenging concours for the better watchmaker arrive to make the more best precision. And the, the winner was the tourbillon uh, detente escapement, but in chronometer marine. And this is what for me was very interesting and challenging to introduce the detente escapement for the hand watch. Why? Because when you Push the shock and the tantiscapant, she stop. Yes. For a chronometer de mine, it's not a problem because in the boat, never have shock. If you have shock, you <laughs> go inside water. Iceberg. But for, for the hand watch, it was very ch challenging. You have three patterns inside the watch, three patterns for realize the first to be on traditional de tantiscapant of the world, resist the shock. And another challenge is to introduce the carbon, nanofab of carbon. This carbon resists to seven kilo. But you need only one kilo half uh, for this mechanism. But very strong cable, and it's very good for the roundment of the chronometry because with chain, uh, it's very bad because all maillon, you understand, all maillon, it's um, uh, take energy, yes. energy down, up, etc. And it's very bad for performance chronometry. And this cable, it's linear. You understand linear? This is why it's very good. So for those of you at home, taking the fusée and chain, removing the chain, and adding a piece of twine made of carbon. Yes. And uh, in last, uh, it's a, a two time zone, instantaneous, uh, uh, two time zones here, and here the ruby is indication of minute. So it's orbital? Yes. And the watch has a seven day power reserve? Yes. 
Uh, fantastic. No, so, no, so four days. Four days, there four we days. go. And so now the watch is almost entirely sapphire. Uh, that's an extraordinary design. Yes, because the uh, glass dome, we can see the whole perspective of the mechanism. This is why it's very interesting. And uh, it's, we can, it, it, you can look more fitness about the glass dome. And, and uh, we have a uh, whole perspective of the watch. This is why I chose this glass dome. And you have similar glass for the Maestro, entry price of my, body, my brand. Uh, but uh, it's a more simple watch, of course. Now, if someone wants to buy a Christophe Clare watch, where do they go? Do you sell them direct? Do you have dealers? But we work with different retailers. Here, you, you have partnership with Sediki. And uh, in uh, Tuzan, with Ambassador, etc., for different countries. Well, thank you very much, sir. This has been an absolute pleasure. You, you are, thank you for, for your message. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023. We're here with Chapek. Patrick, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Thank you very much for coming. So now you have an array of new watches. Let's start with watches that are maybe specific to the Dubai Fair. We're here in the United Arab Emirates, yes. and you've got two new Eastern Arabic numeral models, starting with the Keda Berg. Correct. So uh, it was uh, with our partner, uh, Mansour Jewelers, here in the Dubai. They had the idea to have a special watch as well with Arabic numerals. So we were working with them on that. And they have a specific model with the 38.5 size. And here you are holding the 42.5, which is uh, limited to 10 pieces, um, but which will be distributed via the Chapek network. So now I see you've gone with a couple of different motifs. You have a, a salmon colored dial with your ricochet guilloche. Yes. You have Eastern Arabic numerals, and you've actually executed them on the sub registers as well. It's a very detailed watch. Yes. Now, are the hands also specific to the model? Because they're not standard across the Kederberg line. No, with the Fleur de Lis hands, we had them already in previous models as well. They were usually the choice uh, for all the Kederberg models. You could choose either Fleur de Lis or the Sword hands. So now, this model line was your original, the Kederberg. Yes. And, and I'm curious now that you have a, a broad-based collection of Tourbillon, and you have a Chronograph, you have the much-loved Antarctique. Uh, Kate Berg today, where does it sit in the lineup? Is it where people usually start, or does now is it more like a second shot pack you get after you start with an Antarctica? You have both cases. Some people like to start uh, because it's an entry price model, if you want so. So it's uh, uh, the most affordable one. So many people start there. But of course, the Antarctic has as well a lot of appeal. So often people start with the Antarctic and then want as well a second chapet, which is completely different. So you have a dress watch uh, with a leather bracelet. Now, in terms of the composition of the Keda Berg, you, you don't have to buy them in precious metal, correct? No. Okay. Because I think a lot of people look at dress watches and they think, well, this is going to be white gold or it's going to be platinum or it's going to be palladium, but you can get them in steel. Yes, they are all in steel, what we have here on the plate. We do have a rose gold uh, model as well still, but uh, we offer everything in steel as well. Now you also have a couple of different case sizes. So tell me a little bit about the difference between these two right here. Yes. So our very first original Kederberg from 2015, 2016 was in 42.5, which you are holding here. Uh, later on, we launched a 38.5 to uh, accommodate as well the people with smaller wrists as, as well some ladies. And now we found uh, that we exactly in between is kind of the Goldilocks zone. So we launched now in 40.5. Um, a model in the middle as well. So, so now, if people are interested in this uh, Middle Eastern Special Edition through Mansour Jewelers, is that the sole source, the sole point of contact if they're interested in that model? No, uh, like I said, the, the 42.5 size was distributed via the whole network of Chapek. For, for, well for, for the signature dial for the Eastern Arabic funeral? Yes, as well. Oh, okay. As well, as well. Only the uh, 38.5 is a specific Mansour Jewelers uh, limited edition. They have 20 pieces they're selling solely out of their store. Now, in terms of the Antarctique here, we have a little bit of a special Dubai treatment. Is this also a collaboration with Mansour? Um, no, this was already a, it was an earlier uh, request from one of our shareholders as well. It would be nice to have something uh, with uh, Arabic numerals. So this was already developed. It's actually already, I think, two years ago we started developing it. So the, this Salmon dial will be as well available with a normal Arabic 12. So we will have both both versions, but we were launching it now here at Dubai Watch Week, of course. 
So you're launching this here at Dubai Watch Week, and it's very detailed because it features the Eastern Arabic numerals both for the dial but also for the disc itself. Yes. So another feature that I think is worth calling out is something that wasn't on the original Antarctic models, but it's the micro adjustment that's built into the clasp. Uh, when did this happen, and where did the idea come from? Well, the idea came, of course, from the, the at the beginning we were delivering the bracelets only with half links, and uh, but sometimes during the day you cannot change a link, right? If the, during the day your your wrist is swelling a little bit, it's warm, it starts to be sticky. So we wanted to have a poss possibility to adjust, at least in small increments, uh, your your bracelet. So to have it a little bit loosened, or in the evening you can close it again a little bit. So the, that was the general idea, of course. And we were working on it. We had several approaches, uh, and we, we trusted in this one, and uh, people gave us rights, obviously. It's very much appreciated by the people which are wearing it, including myself. It's really very convenient. And it's sort of emblematic of how the model line is evolving, because you've got the upgraded bracelet, but then you also have all new models right here. Royal Onyx, tell me about how this happened, because this is a spectacular Antarctic. So this indeed was an idea from one of the, uh, from our retailer, Mansour Juveris. Mohamed was approaching us with the idea, and uh, we were so amazed, we saw like the idea behind it, and we agreed to do this special edition only with Mansour Juveris here in, in Dubai. So they have 18 pieces to sell. And uh, this is what we like very much. We do some retailer editions, but we like as well when they approach us with an original idea, something we haven't thought about, something we haven't done yet, and not simply like, oh, how about you do this one in green? So this is not the idea what we would like. And this one uh, convinced us very much and uh, success gives him right. So it's, it's a beautiful piece and a lot of people asking for it. So full onyx style with blue sapphire indices. Correct. And available, I'm, I'm assuming, only through Mansour Jewelers and only in the region. Correct. And is this watch sold out already? Because I believe it's just launched. It just launched uh, two days ago, uh, just before Dubai Watch Week, and I think two thirds are already gone. So okay. we are. You got to move fast closer. if you want to. I go. think until the end of the fair, it will be. It will be over. Very, very cool. So now to shift gears a little bit away from sports watches. Yes. One of the most interesting watches you've launched, really since the Antarctic Retropont, is this incredible. Uh, I mean, I would describe it as a flight of fancy, but also a very cerebral watch. So it's romantic and it's intellectual at the same time. Place Vendôme Complicité with Bernard Lederer. Uh, where did this discussion start? When did you know you wanted to work with him? Well, I started a little bit earlier. So the idea for the watch came already in 2018. Because you see still like compared with the Kader Berg, we always have still like the design language with the subdials, which now changed only in the yes. balance wheels. So we had the idea to do something like that. Uh, spoke to several constructors, but no one really dared to, to really go into it. It seemed too complex uh, and uh, there, were, there was too much chance of failure. So we shelved it for the moment, but then by uh, pure chance, the daughter of Bernhard Lederer is in the same class than the, the youngest son of Xavier de Roque Morel, our CEO. So uh, a common friend introduced the two men and uh, they liked each other. They were working already a bit together and they said, hey, how about we collaborate on, on a watch? And by the way, Xavier, like we had this idea to do and no one really was able to, to manage basically to, to solve the technical issues around the escapement. And Bernhard always like, like ah, I have an idea already. So they uh, were able to solve the issue to have the gear trains around the center and going in the top in the, in the differential. So, you, as you know, with the two balance wheels, there are two solutions. Yes. You have the resonance, which is a physical phenomenon with, where they go in uh, synchronously. But this one is a technical solution via a gear train and uh, differential at 12 o'clock. So now this watch is still in development. So the watch we're looking at here is a prototype. So if you're looking at this at home, it might be a bit cruder than the finished article. But the watch, in terms of its basic engineering, it, it's pretty much set in stone. Two escapements three days of power reserve, they're coupled by a differential which averages out the difference and then it drives the hands at center. Correct. When do you believe this watch is going to be available because I know development is ongoing? We start producing them now, so we start in Q1 to deliver the first pieces, but due to the complexity there is like one or two watches maybe per week which can be done, uh, so we 
expect the 100 pieces which are available in the two colors, so a total of 100 pieces to be delivered until the end of next year. And what are the two medals? Uh, white gold and rose gold. Okay. The white, go white gold with a silver dial and the rose gold with the blue dial. And so the watch is actually smaller than you might think at 41.8 millimeters with nicely sculpted lugs. Chapek watches always wear nicely. Was there special thought given to how this watch would actually fit? Despite we work a lot on, on this uh, topic, yes. Excellent. And if people want to learn yes. more about the Quai de yes. Berg, the Place Vendôme, Comte yes. de or the Antarctique, where yes. do they go? They can, of course, always visit us in our boutique in Geneva, our flagship store, or as well with our uh, almost 50 retail partners worldwide. And of course, on chapek.com, you get all the information you need. Thank you so much, Patrick. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. That. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023 with Debitune, and we have a big launch the latest iteration of the much-loved DB Digital. This is the DVD in titanium with green dial, a bit of a revival of a cult classic from 2006 here. Why did you choose to bring back the DVD? Uh, because uh, this watch has everything from the between all the aesthetic code, but also a very interesting caliber that is a digital caliber and a, a annual calendar in line. Um, you have also the, the jumping hour and uh, of course on that watch you can see that you have also all the, the innovation of the between the triple partial system, the, the, the twin barrels, the, the decoration, the code de between and on that one you have code de between but also on the, on the dial you have the code de Genève. So you have the best of the two worlds of uh, the finishing and um, I see also the, the iteration as you say uh, in a green green color is uh, something that really uh, fit uh, perfectly to this model and uh, it can uh, remind you the you know the sun sunshine uh, hitting the, the the palm leaf in uh, in palm spring for okay. example so no but uh, it's really nice uh, Watch this. Now, uh, Pierre Jacques, you're the CEO of Debitune. You've been CEO two times, and you've seen through that time that the company really values its history, even though its history only goes back to 2002. Uh, Denis is a very sentimental watchmaker, Denis Flageolet. Did he have a say in the return of the DVD? Was this watch special to him? Uh, yes, it's really, you know, historically, uh, you know, we start our first uh, in house caliber with the 2004 um, DB15, you know, it was a perpetual calendar uh, when we really start to, to make our, our, our new uh, in house caliber. And this is also one of the, the early stage, uh, you know, complication that, that the between did uh, really in house. And the, the shape, uh, the design of, uh, of this watch, when you have, uh, you know, this, uh, this large bullet lugs, the, uh, we can really. Uh, uh, you know, it's really a reminder also uh, old Patek watch. So is in one sense all the memory of uh, the Denis Flagellet journeys when he used to restore clocks and uh, and a pocket watch. So it's really important to, for him to also to you know to buckle the buckle and uh, to to start also to revisit the the own history and also aesthetically you can see that. Even if the Bethune, we had an uh, amazing design uh, evolution, of uh, evolution design, you can see that these two watch, they're still really similar and you, you have all the DNA uh, of that DB uh, digital, even in uh, the new DB28. So it's... Uh, and, and it's interesting because like you said, it does recall pocket watches and vintage watches that Denny would have restored uh, in the era prior to founding Debitune. So you could see elements of pocket watches, maybe a little bit of a pendant watch in there. It was also a transitional piece because now you do have an early in-house caliber, uh, but you, you still have some of the Ogival lug profile of the original DB1 series, but now we're starting to look at hinged lugs that would eventually become evident on the 28th, the 26th, and the 27th. Yeah. So it's a transitional watch. Uh, exactly. And this is a limited edition, isn't it? Yes, it's limited to 20 pieces. So, yeah, we, we did the, the first limited edition of the, this, this new DVD with the, the Swiss beat 
uh, edition yes. uh, in burgundy and then uh, this one it's a, a 20 20 pieces limited edition and uh, uh, what's important also to uh, to highlight that on that one the case is a high polished titanium grade 5 the previous one historically was in rose gold or white gold but this one is a very very comfortable and very very light uh, titanium watch uh, high polished so it, in fact, it looks like the, the original, but the, the watch is completely different. New caliber um, uh, is much more thinner than uh, the previous one, and uh, also uh, yeah, just a and still still a five day power reserve. It's uh, still that one is a, yes five day power reserve. So you can see that on the wrist, although it looks like it might be a big watch. It's only forty two point six and it's under 12 millimeters thick. So being all sapphire and titanium, it's a very light watch, but it's also a really ergonomically advanced watch, a super comfortable timepiece. It doesn't look like the kind of thing you would wear with a dress suit, but it will slide under a cuff. And of course, Debatune very early on in the wristwatch game with a linear calendar. You've got the day, the date, and the month. And while you're seeing more of that today, uh, this watch is based on a design from 2006, that original design, Fewer than 40 were made of the DB Digital. The DB Digital brought back this year with the Season 2, and now here with the combination of titanium and a green dial. 20 pieces, it will always be a rare model. This will never be a mass-produced watch. No, never. And no one the Betune is going to be a, a mass-produced watch, but that one is really limited. And, and what uh, is the recommended retail price for this at dealers? Hello, I'm not really familiar with the conversion into US dollar, but uh, basically I, I think this one, it will be around 130 US dollars. Let's say 105,000 Swiss francs, uh, francs uh, without taxes. So if you make it with the actual conversion and the uh, US tax, you, you must be around 130,000 US. Here, thank you so much. Really Tim, it was this. really a pleasure welcoming you here in Dubai. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023. I'm here with Vincent, who is the Director of Chronometry for the Nanbertou. We are discussing the recent GPHG Laureate in the Chronometry category. This is the FB3. Vincent, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. So now this is uh, the most compact watch you've made. Tell yep. me a little bit about where the inspiration for this came from. This, this watch actually is inspired by one of uh, the Louis Berthoud pocket watch integrating uh, the very early uh, cylindrical hairspring made so by the nephew of Ferdinand Berthoud uh, that was producing the most compact marine chronometer but also this uh, amazing uh, pocket watches with uh, cylindrical hairspring. So we really uh, studied from this original pocket watch from the early 18th century and we redeveloped our movement, uh, integrating this for the first time as cylindrical hairspring, officially chronometer certified. This took us two years, a bit more than two years research and development, because you have no literature, technical literature about this category of springs. Uh, and we had really to learn by making samples, trial, prototypes. It does really, really important work. And so now this watch is a very open, very airy. You can see the interior of it. But the three-dimensional element that everyone wants to see first is that hairspring. Uh, tell me a little bit about what goes into making and designing a cylindrical hairspring. Well, it's, it's, the idea was actually to transcribe not the design of the antique pocket watch, but the emotion. Yes. Uh, and we took the elements. Uh, first, we, we decided to place the hairspring uh, on one line with the post hole that allows to see it from the top, from the bottom and from the lateral uh, windows and to have the energy supplied to the watch, that means the barrel, in his solar place, that means at 12, like a sun irradiating the energy to the movement. So it's a little bit um, feng shui behind the project, the product. Now, if you could tell us a little bit about the exclusivity of this watch and about your timepieces in general, I was very impressed by that. This is, okay, this, this collection actually, the FB3 SPC, standing for cylindrical hairspring in French, is not a limited edition, but is limited by the production because for one movement, we need the 150 hours hand decoration under microscope. And then just for assembling and adjusting a hairspring is one week work. 
plus then the assembling of the movement and sending the watch to the cask. And so it's very long. We have a capacity of supply of two to three FB3 per year, per, per month. That means 30, 35 watches a year of this, this collection. Now the watches are made in white gold? So we have two models, one in white gold or the other one I'm wearing here in rose gold. So it's really two, two different expressions. One is the very traditional and something more modern a little bit. And this new model I introduced here for the Dubai Watch Week is actually a demand from collectors. When we launched the first two models, the two references, I had a lot of requests to have a white gold case with the black movement. And I say, okay, thank you for the advice. And the, to the, today we are happy to present this new combination uh, here uh, to the Dubai Watch Week. That makes a classic watch a little bit more sporty oh. for the taste of different collectors. Without a doubt. Now, it's a three-day power reserve and it is a certified chronometer. Yeah, for sure. Like uh, any Ferdinand Berthou, it's always a challenge uh, to pass the cost. Uh, it's, it's really something difficult. It's very difficult. And today, uh, the, um, the cylindrical hairspring used in the past for marine chronometer, when we receive the cost, we reach the same level of accuracy as our tourbillon. That means an average of uh, plus one, minus two, minus three uh, seconds after 24 hour running. So it's very, very accurate. So it even goes a little bit beyond what the cost would be. Uh, by Ferdinand number two, the maximum we allow is to be the 50% uh, more accurate than the total cost. The cost has, uh, is minus four plus six, and we only supply a watch that has the maximum, the half of these results. Now, the watches are named primarily after their case shape. So you've had FB1, FB2, yep. and FB3. Exactly. So you could have something that has a fusée and chain and a tourbillon, but with conventional lugs, and that would be an FB2 with the original movement. Exactly. That's it. Are there thoughts to use this new case uh, with different movements? Uh, this uh, new line, yes, of course, we will develop uh, movements uh, built around the cylindrical hairspring with various complications. But this is something that will come in the long-term future. <laughs> now, in terms of pr uh, pricing for these, uh, rose gold and white gold, uh, roughly what does it cost to get one of these watches? Uh, the retail price in Swiss francs is uh, 145,000 Swiss francs, UK, including taxes. Now, if someone's interested in one of these watches and they want to buy one or explore buying one, uh, where do they reach out? Uh, they can uh, here come uh, at uh, Ahmed Sadiqi and Son, and uh, they can uh, acquire one of these timepieces in Dubai or contact our, our other partners, only eight around the world. <laughs> and how many watches does Ferdinand Berthoud make in a given year, all models? The total annual production is today 50 watches uh, per year. So I'm just going to do some quick tech and specs for those of you watching at home. This is the new FB3 from Chronometry Ferdinand Bertou. 42.3 millimeters in diameter. You can get white gold, you can get rose gold. The watch features a three-day power reserve, three hertz beat rate. You can see it has the most conventional escapement arrangement of any Ferdinand Bertou to date, but it also has a cylindrical hairspring with inner and outer curves, and this is reminiscent of marine chronometers, but also of the pocket watches built by Louis Bertou, who was the son of Ferdinand Bertou. You can see the dial is very open, airy, the escapement is exposed, the barrel is visible with a dial side barrel bridge. There's also a power reserve indicator, you turn it over, you can see that it's gorgeously decorated with a vintage inspired sort of frosted profile, which is period correct, as back in the day of Louis Berthoud, there would not have been Côte de Genève. So this is Chronometry Ferdinand Berthoud at Dubai Watch Week 2023. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023. We're here with Frédéric Constant. I'm here with Roland, complications watchmaker for the company. You have been personally involved in the development of this. Now, this is the manufactured tourbillon, but looks can be deceiving. It's not just a manufacturer. It's not a regular one, no. <laughs> so what sets this apart? What it sets apart, it's a couple first. So first we have the meteorites in uh, combination with the platinum. That's already a first for Frédéric Constant. But the things that makes it really special um, is the complete hand finishing on the movement. 
so we tackled everything. Every screw has been touched. Every uh, every side of a bridge, for example, has been touched. Uh, nothing stays untouched. Everything, every steel part is black polished. Uh, every angle has been beveled, all by hand, all by traditional means. Now we have a really sharp break between the lugs and the case. The finishing yep. externally is just as impressive as internally. Thank you. <laughs> but tell me how long it takes to finish these internal components. Uh, bridge, uh, just a bridge alone can take up to 12 hours, depending on uh, the condition. Because sometimes you have one small thing, you have to get it out and you, you have to go back sometimes. And so this is truly hand finished. You were yeah. saying before 150 to 200 hours for everything in this movement. Yeah, for the whole, whole yeah. And then we start the assembly and then we start uh, regulating. So there's a lot of hours in there. And you were saying that this is going to be done very traditionally. This is bevels finished with yeah. gentian wood, screws yeah. black polished with a zinc plate. Yeah. And this is done by you. Yeah, and my colleague Roma. So it's really an initiative of us two. Uh, we directly went to the director, the CEO, to ask uh, if we could do something. He was, he was, he found it a good idea. He was happy, but he wanted to see something. So we made two small parts as an example, one rhodium coated. One rutanium coated, I was like, which one do you like better? He chose the rutanium, so then we advanced and made a whole movement. We showed it again, he was like, okay, yeah, we're gonna do this, it's, it's cool, it's, uh, it's nice. And then we came up with this. It's our baby, actually. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the different types of finish that go into this movement. Yeah. We talked a bit about beveling, we talked a bit about black polishing, but that's not all. No, so there's hand hammering as well. Uh, hand hammering also done traditional way. Uh, you, of course, jewelers have the machine where you can just make a hand hammering real quick. This is really done by stake and hammer. Stake, hammer, step by step, pin by pin, you make, uh, you make the bridges. And this is also a new case size, 39 you were saying? Yeah, 39. So newly introduced this year. Um, we also have it in steel and in rose gold. And this really being the, the high level one of the, the, the pair. Now, Frederic Constant is known for value. My initial guess was this would be somewhere in the 50,000 range, but you said it's considerably less than that. Yeah, it's 43,000 uh, euros. And I have checked this out firsthand at close range in person. I can tell you the finish really is that good. So if you're looking for something extraordinarily special, you have an open mind and a slightly above average budget. 43,000 is still not it's cheap, still, by yeah. no means. But if you've got an open mind and an open wallet, maybe we should say this would be the best tourbillon for you to consider. Absolutely above category in every way from the meteorite dial to the finish of the platinum case to the detailing of the movement. This is not the kind of watch you typically associate with Frédéric Constant. This is, this is a new high for the brand and genuinely cool. So we have another watch here that I think is kind of interesting to look at because it's a collaboration. This is the Manufactured Perpetual Calendar collaboration with Peter Speak, yep. creator of the Speak Marin brand. Tell me about how this came about and what this watch is all about. Uh, well, it started first with a collaboration with the, with his site, uh, the Naked Watchmaker. Uh, so the first collaboration was really uh, what came up in his mind first, how it started, vintage watches. Um, so it used to have a brown dial. And now for this piece, we really have a monochrome look. So completely different than the first one. First one's really nice as well, but this one, is, bit more easy going. The other one is really colors all over the place. This one, um, a really monochrome gray look. Um, and really working together with Peter Speak on, on the design on this one. So you went with a 41 millimeter steel case, but it's black DLC. It's got yeah. a very a very stark look to it. Was, yeah. was that his input or was that sort of mutually agreed? I think uh, it was mutually. Yeah. I wasn't really involved in this particular piece, but um, what I've seen from the first collab, I, I would I think it's uh, mutually, mutually a great story. <laughs> it's interesting to me that you do have the, the love the anthracite gray yep. with the white contrasts on the dial and the same on the strap. But the real contrast is actually the mechanism underneath. And what surprises me for an affordable perpetual calendar is that the module under the dial is actually quite attractive. Yeah, so uh, this also has, a, of course, a bit of a different finishing. It's a bit more expensive than a regular normal QP. Uh, so this one is around 12,000. Uh, that's 12,000 yeah. franc. Yeah, okay. uh, but that's also because the more finishing, of course, smaller limited uh, edition, 35 pieces of those. Uh, and everything has been reworked extra. So every piece got a set in finish or either polish. Or, so there's a bit more work in the, than in a regular one. Still very affordable for yeah. a perpetual calendar, especially one with an in-house caliber. A really interesting watch on a lot of levels, but it's only 35 pieces, correct? Yeah. And if you want one, you probably get it relatively soon because they're coming out in December? December, yeah. 
Very cool. So if people want to know more about Frédéric Constant, where do they go? Uh, the website or either you can go to a store uh, close to you, which is selling Frédéric Constant. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. No worries. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023. I'm here with Antonio Calce, CEO of Grubel Forsey. We have a host of novelties for this year, and I want to just thank you for your time. First, thank you. Thank introduce you. me to some of what's changing, because we've got both different case sizes and new case yeah. materials for the double balance and the balancier. Um, for me, it's not, real, it's, it's not a change, it's, a, it's an evolution. Uh, it's an evolution. Uh, uh, and it's true that um, this year we, we, we launched a new, a new materials, carbon fiber. Um, what, what, what was the goal, uh, all this co the convex collection? It was really to build a strong signature, a strong identity for the brand with this really specific case. And we have on this, on this case, 41.5 uh, millimeters for the first time. Uh, we have different caliber inside. This one, we have the, the double uh, the double balancier, we have the simple balancier, and we have also, we launched a flat balancier in two weeks uh, at 160. This is the double balancier, carbon fiber, 88 grams. Um, our fixed inventions with the differential uh, on the middle, and uh, it's really a cool watch because really um, 88 grams, really, really uh, light, and, uh, and yeah, thanks to this, evolution we reach also a new clientele and it was important for us now it's interesting to me because you haven't worked with carbon fiber before and now you've jumped straight into it balancier convex s2 you've got a carbon fiber movement and a carbon fiber case this is actually carbon fiber inside and out and i guess my interest here is that you're doing something you've never done before why now again i think it was important to have um you know when i started four years ago uh, we had a very nice discussion with Robert Grebel uh, and we were both convinced that we need to open new doors. We, 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 we need to, it was important to reach a big size, you know, and uh, this is why we decided also to play in the new price segment. Uh, the, the average price in the past was around 500,000 Swiss francs and um, to create really a sustainable I would say business model. It was important to yes to create this, this new product offer in a new size uh, to reach a new clientele, and um, and this is exactly what we did uh, with with all this evolution in, in, in terms of collection. And today it's it's uh, the feedback that we receive from the clients, from the connoisseur, from the collectors. Uh, it's it's a very strong strong message from from us. And you know with, with this collection also um, we reach a new clientele, new doors. Call, I call this client, this new consumer, call a connoisseur. Why connoisseur? Because they really want also this add value in terms of finishing. Because one third of the of the price, the retail price, is hand finishing, and this is also very important to uh, for us uh, to push always the boundaries in terms of finishing. And uh, and yeah, and also a youngest clientele today. Uh, it's fantastic that we have younger people that 30, 35 years old uh, come to us and say, wow, this is really cool. I, I, and, this is, it, and it was a goal again, it was a goal. So it's kind of like Rolls Royce, which used to have a very aged clientele. Then they started going with the black badge, more driver oriented cars like the Wraith and the Ghost. And now the average age at Rolls Royce for your customer is 43. That's what you're sort of doing with Grubel Force. So you had a very veteran collector base. Correct. Older, very wealthy, but also very small in numbers. And this is expanding that base. Exactly. It's totally right. And also, all the, all the, all, since the creation of the brand in 2004, uh, the, produ the production was always 1985 time pieces per year. Yes. And it's also difficult. We are 140 people huh, in the company. It was also difficult to also to create, uh, again, a sustainable uh, business model if you don't reach, um, a, um, I would say, a, a size, a bigger size, you know? Yeah. And uh, thanks to this product today, we will increase also a little bit the quantities. Today, we produce around 200 uh, time pieces per year. And thanks to also this price positioning, it was possible for us to reduce the distribution. Uh, today we were we had 60 doors uh, four years ago. Today we have around 22 doors, and the goal is really to reach 15 doors. 
to create more value, more consistency on, on uh, but you need the right product mix uh, and the right design, the right size, the right, you know, it's, it's really an in-depth uh, analysis. Now, and I totally understand that. And also there's a progression. You start with the balancier, double balance, and then ultimately that person can stay in the Grubel 4C family all the way to, I guess, what you could call the top of the model line, the watch is traditionally yeah. associated with the brand. Let's talk a little bit about the Tourbillon Cardin because this is probably the most exciting Tourbillon that you've launched since the 24 second. And it's faster than the Thank 24. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just to eat our eight inventions, first of all. Uh, we launched this Tourbillon Cardin one month ago. Um, and it's incredible in terms of precision, in terms of, of course, complication and, and finishing. Hand finishing is just crazy. The Tourbillon, the concept is we have two cages. One, uh, 48 second rotation is the big one. And the small one, 16 second rotations, um, where the Tourbillon is. Uh, the, 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 the size of the balance is 12.6 millimeters, is a big one, inclined 30 degrees. Um, and I think it's, 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 uh, it's really the, 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 the most accurate uh, tourbillon ever made at, uh, at Global Force. And also in terms of finishing, uh, the, the grenema in the two plates, the, 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 the black polished. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really a piece of art. And, uh, and talking about uh, the rarity and the exclusivity on this kind of product, we decided to, to produce only 11 timepieces per year for the for five years only. And after that, we stopped the caliber. And so 55 examples of a unique caliber and then you stop. Absolutely. To, so now, to create value and rarity. This is, I definitely don't want to cut you off, but this is beyond belief. And I got to ask about the relative contributions of Robert Grubel and Stephen Forsey, because I know they do very different things. Uh, talk about the different angles they work when designing a watch, because I know Robert's more on the aesthetic side, Stephen's often a lot more technical. You know, today we have, what was the goal when I started four years ago? Uh, Robert asked me to put in place a management, me, a management team, because it's also important to have a transition uh, between founders and management team. And I am really close with Robert and all the strategic vision uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really a, our job, you know what I mean? Uh, and again, we, we have 22 people in the R&D department, 22. You know, engineers, uh, mathematicians, physicians. And this is why today it's, 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 it's really good for the brand because uh, uh, we have an incredible history, we have an incredible uh, DNA. And I think the management team that we, we have today at Global Forcé is really the, the, they are really the right, or the right people to, really to continue to, 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 to support this incredible project with exactly in the same, in the same I will say, the same uh, signature of the brand. And, uh, and it's also, it, it's, it was also important to do that for us. Antonio, thank you so much. Thanks. I really appreciate this. Thanks. Hi, this is Tim Masso of the 1916 Company here at Manufacturer Ludovic Balois with Mrs. Ludovic Balois. Flavia, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about some watches that represent the latest from a man who started working on airplanes, moved into watchmaking, became a master watchmaker, sonnery watches, chiming, struck it out independent after working on the Harry Winston Opus series, now with the halftime and the upside down, a small creator of currently about 30 watches per year, soon to be 50, but likely no more. We're going to start with a watch that I think represents the most animated of the Balouard models. This is the spectacular Halftime. So now you can see how the Halftime operates. 41 millimeters, you can see that the watch includes a retrograding minute and a jumping hour, but not a conventional jumping hour. Two different discs come together at the top of the dial to create the current hour. So they are bifurcated half time effectively before they become whole at the top. Now the watch is 41 millimeters in diameter. It's got a 38 hour power reserve. You can see on the reverse side, beautiful lush finishing on every surface. 
and you can see even micro bevels within the jewel sinks. Now, what's really cool here is that the watch is entirely created by manufacturer Ludovic Valois, so production is low, and in the past has been as low as 12 pieces a year. Now, there's more than that today, but this is a creator who truly makes every part of the watch. We've got a lovely petrol blue dial. You can see it has a glossy lacquered sheen to it. We have a scale down at the bottom for the retrograding minutes, so it's doubly animated, double jumping. An important point to mention, a lot of watches that are platinum use white gold crowns. This is a platinum crown to match. And you can see being off center, it's even an ambidextrous watch. Now we're gonna move over here to two different versions of Ludovic Valois original timepiece. So to the left, you're gonna see the original upside down, which has small seconds. And then off to the right, you can see the spectacular blue meteorite. Now the blue meteorite, a new offering, you can see it's lush, it's lovely. It uses the gorgeous numerals for which the brand is justifiably famous. And because this is a watch that emphasizes inversion, you can see how the profile of the case is actually concave from lug tip to lug tip, doing all sorts of wonderful things with the light, almost like a fun house for your wrist. And I'm gonna turn it over so you can see what makes this watch so special. Uh, probably easiest to see on the blue meteorite, a Maltese cross mechanism at the center, a manual wine caliber with 40 hours of power reserve. And then all around you have the Maltese cross mechanism that regulates the complication. So I'm going to withdraw the crown now and demonstrate the operation of the upside down. You can see the current hour is right side up. Every other hour is upside down. You can see that different types of garnishings and finish are possible. The company does extensive customization and special requests. And this is everything from the gilding of the movements to the design of the dials. This is manufacturer Ludovic Balois at Dubai Watch Week 2023. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023. We're at MBNF. I'm here with Arnaud. We're talking about the new HM11 Architect, the first architecturally inspired horological machine. Arnaud, tell us a little bit about where this design comes from, the genesis of it. Okay, so it's coming from the architecture of the 60s and 70s. Um, you know, when, when man wanted to go to the moon, but we didn't go there yet. And there were all those different houses, so you, you can shoot in a minute, but that were built all around the world, in the US, in France, in Europe, wherever. And there was one house in particular, which is this one up there, made of different pods. And all those pods together were making actually a house. And one day Max discovered this house, actually on Instagram he found this picture, so sometimes you have good surprises on Instagram. And he asked the question, as always with MBNF, wouldn't it be cool if we would construct a house a watch like a house, right? And so this watch is basically like a tiny house with four different rooms. Each room has a different indication. So over here, you have the hours and minutes. Up, let's, thank you. So hours and minutes, if you look here, you have the power reserve indicator. If you look here, because it's a house, you have a thermometer. And the last room is the first ever full sapphire crown. So this crown is here up just to set the time. Yes but not to wind the movement, because to wind the movement, as you just did before, you actually rotate the entire case. And so it's got a flying tourbillon on the top, manufacturer caliber, you said this was your 21st manufacturer caliber. Exactly. Uh, some of them, the, pre the first one at MBNF, because the company was very small, they were based on different movements, so sometimes on a GP movement, but the LM101, which I'm wearing now, is the first completely in-house caliber, and so this one is developed completely in-house as well. But then, for example, the sequential Evo and the perpetual calendar were developed by Stephen McDonnell, who is kind of in-house, but, you know, still based in Belfast, so... Yeah. It's okay, it's always been a collaborative effort, Max and his friends, after all. Exactly. Now, the watch has a 72-hour power reserve, which seems like a lot, given that it's not an enormous watch, it's a 42-millimeter timepiece. Absolutely. So, it's a titanium case, 42-millimeter, and as you mentioned, it's pretty impressive to be able to have all those complications, the flying tourbillon, all those three-dimensional indexes, all that in a 42 millimeter case. So we are pretty happy with the wearability of the piece. Definitely give us a uh, wrist shot there. Exactly. <laughs> so you can see that it's actually almost the same size as my LM101. It's actually smaller than the legacy machine 
uh, Evo, so most of them are 44 millimeter. This one is 42. So yeah, pretty easy to wear. Driver's watch, so you read the time naturally on the sides. And yeah, that's uh, HM11. And I think we got some of Eric Giroux's designs right here. This is sort of where the design came from. You can see the inspirations before. Now you can see some of the designs as they were drawn out by the hand of a longtime collaborator with MBNF, Eric Giroux, designing many machines over exactly. the years. Exactly. So you can see the difference between Max's first sketch here in 2018. So that really shows that every single watch at MBNF takes about five years to develop. Um, so those sketches are not so good. And then we work, <laughs> as always, with Eric Giroux, uh, who is the, one of the very good friends of MBNF since day one who is always working on all the designs. And here you have another inspiration for the watch, which is this ball clock that actually up was used here inside for the dial. Uh, because in architecture, you, you want to have a good use of the space. You want to have three dimensionality. This ball clock was just the perfect inspiration for, for the dial here. So. And so there's going to be a very limited run, I think, 25 and 25 to start out with. Exactly. 25 with a blue crown, 25 with a rose gold crown. Exactly. So it's basically the finishing on the dial, which is uh, different. So either with the blue CBD coating or a red gold coating on the other one. 25 pieces of each, as you just said. Now you can see the underside of this. It is designed to be very ergonomic. It's curved, it's canted, it's got a camber that matches the shape of a wrist. So in addition to being very light, mostly of sapphire and titanium, it does have a really nice shape to sit on the wrist. Don't be deceived by the photos. The watch is really quite compact, and that's part of the pleasure of owning it. It's a remarkably tight package with flying tourbillon, three days of power reserve, three separate... Four days. Four days. As Four days, 96 hours. Yes. Even better. And then you can see that we've got a power reserve indicator on one side, along with the temperature and the time. And so this is also a very complicated watch, sort of a, a four-axis watch, with one axis being the winding. A really cool piece, this is the new HM11 Architect from MBNF at Dubai Watch Week 2023. Arno, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023 here with Moritz Grossman, fine German watches from Glashütte. We're going to start with a new version of the back page. Can you tell me a little bit about what is new with the back page for 2023? Yes, so the back page, of course, is our inverted caliber. The back side mirrored all the way to the front side. And now we just released two limited editions of 25 pieces each with the green dial in rose gold and also the same dial in platinum, both are limited to 25 pieces. Now your watches are always fascinating because so much of it is made in-house by Moritz Grossman. For those of you who are not familiar with the brand, a uh, small manufacturer founded in 2008. They're celebrating an anniversary this year and we'll come back to the back page in a moment, but I think it's important to talk a little bit about the company's modern heritage because it's embodied right here. Tremblage dial, anniversary script. Uh, tell me a little bit about what went into this design. Exactly. So the Tremblage, of course, launched in uh, 2021. Uh, very interesting, old traditional handcrafted uh, technique. For the 15 year anniversary, we tried to include uh, somewhat of a signet, uh, secret hidden signature on the dial. You have 2008 to 2020, 23 written and 15 in the subdial of the second. And it's kind of like a engraving that goes against the grain of the regular tremblage so depending on how you angle it you either see it more or less so it's kind of giving you ideas to maybe customize the watch in the future but this one is a unique piece just to commemorate the 15th anniversary of the brand is the tremblage dial still available it's still available but of course very limited because one dial almost is a full week just of handcrafting doing the trampling motion so it's somewhat limited by our own production now that we have a little bit more background on the company, let's jump back to the back page. And you can see the fascinating fabrication of the hands, which they cut, polish, and fire. Why is it that uh, the hands are brownish purple rather than blue? Yes, of course, we're looking for something uh, that's distinct, something unique. And of course, this brown, violet, or purple hue, if you want to call it, it's a lot more challenging, so of course in watchmaking you look for challenges and not the easy way out. So for the traditional blue, you have a lot more time to you know, take off the hands out of the pan and hit the right color across the whole hand. But here it's only a fraction of a second where you have to take off the watch and really make sure that the tip and the center of the hand have the exact same hue and that of course across all the three hands of one watch. So here it's more the challenging part and of course adding an interesting wrinkle to Mozgrossmann 
for the hands that are already special in, in themselves. So that's just the hands. You can see that this brings everything you love about fine German watch finish to the dial side. We have black polish on the crown wheel core. We have solarization on the ratchet wheel of the barrel. You can see freehand engraving on the balance cock with a micrometric Moritz Grossman regulator. And then you turn it all over and you can see not only does the company use those distinctively browned fired hands, it has distinctively brown fired screws. There's also a lovely pale aesthetic brought about by the German silver alloy used for the bridges. And note the width of the stripes, extraordinarily broad and luminous, plus clear sapphires used in traditional golden cheton cups. This is old school watchmaking, but with all of the fun on the dial side. So jumping from the back page to the tremblage and now to a new version of the Tefnut, at first glance, this looks like a fairly conventional dress watch, but it's not. Tell me what's different. Exactly. So the Tefnut now in rose gold and in steel with a silver plated by friction dial. So it's a brass based dial. The numerals are all engraved, then filled with this black lacquer. And then you take a silver and salt mixture that is brushed onto the dial. So by this friction process, the irons of the silver and salt mixture are combining with the brass dial to form this velvety kind of texture. So a technique that was used when there was no electricity to galvanize dials. So again, another in interesting handcrafted dial now in 39 millimeters in a much slimmer case in the Tefnut line. And you can see you're not getting less finish, maybe a smaller watch, but you're not getting a lesser movement. There's a consistent quality of finish across all Moritz Grossman watches right up to the tourbillon. And this is the entry point to the brand. It's really quite artisanal the way the dial is put together with the silver compound applied by friction. And I believe the lacquer goes in before the silver. It goes in before because this uh, kind of silver friction doesn't stick on the lacquer so you can clean it. So the numerals are engraved, filled with the lacquer and later on you apply the silver friction process. I want to bring in a personal favorite of mine. This is not necessarily a novelty at Dubai Watch Week, but you're looking at the latest version of the Hamatic Vintage. Vintage inspired dial with purple accents. You can see the case is quite standard Moritz Grossman. It's when you get to the back that you realize this is an entirely different type of automatic. Tell me a little bit about why you chose a bumper automatic. Yes, so again, that's the, the challenge. And of course, we did not want to cover up our beautiful hand finished movement uh, with a rotor. So we went for something, of course, it has roots in the history of watchmaking, the very first pocket watches or also the first automatic wristwatch, essentially, uh, were used in this kind of pendulum mechanism. So it took us three and a half years to develop it, make it fully efficient. And of course, you can still have a perfect view of the movement and a very, very intricate automatic movement that's basically unparalleled. And so it's a, a proud achievement for the brand for the first and only automatic caliber. And I believe in a very impressive 72 hour power reserve. Yes. So that is the Hematic Vintage, and this is Moritz Grossman at Dubai Watch Week 2023. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023 with Bertrand Melan of Moser. And we're here with the newest of the Streamliner series. Bertrand, tell me a little bit about the new Streamliner Small Seconds. Yes, quite a lot of new feature on this one. First of all, new movement, uh, a movement that we've been developing for the last three years, which is a macro rotor movement, uh, but also new size for the Streamliner, a bit smaller and thinner, so 39 millimeter. And also, at the same time, for the first time, we use this new dial, which is a hammered and enameled uh, grand feu dial with this aqua blue color. So now it's, it's at least 12 firings, correct? To yes. get the grand feu and three different pigments. Yes. So now this watch doesn't give up anything in terms of water resistance or durability compared to the previous. 120 meter water resistant. Now it's I can also, the on the back, I, I wish I could show it to better effect. It's going to be a challenge with a bracelet. But tell me a little bit about this new uh, HMC 500 movement that you have. Yes, so as you can see, it's uh, it, long development. We really wanted a, a, a smaller and thinner movement in order to create smaller and thinner watches. Uh, and here, for the first time, we, we never made macro auto before. So here it's a platinum mass for a rotor. Um, it's also a new type of finishing with this a bit anthracite sort of finishing uh, with then the gold chaton, etc. that you will see in the details. 
Um, yeah, very proud. And it still has the same or better power reserve as the HMC 200. It's the same, 72 hours power reserve. Now this watch, granted it's not going to be a limited edition, but it should be relatively limited in production. You guys... It's quite complex to make. The movement, of course, is quite complex to make, but also the dial is very complex to make. So we're hoping to do 10, 12 a month. That's, uh, that's a bit the idea of, of the production of a piece like this. So yes, very limited for us. Very it's, rare. I vote, <laughs> indeed, living up to the billing. Now this bracelet here, this was always impressive from the first Dreamliners in 2020. Could you tell me a little bit about this? Because many people tell me this is the most intricately finished integrated bracelet they've seen. Yes, the, the beauty of it I find is uh, the play of light on it with di the different sort of finishing, which was extremely complex. Uh, when we, we designed it, I think it's now six or seven years ago to the moment we launched it, uh, took so long because we could not find a supplier that could do the finish, exact finishing that we wanted. But we, we were strong on what we were asking them to do and we insisted and at the end we found and I think that's, that's what is the beauty. First of all, it's very comfortable on the wrist, which is always an important feature. But at the same time, you see on all the details between the, the, the satiné, the, the polishing, etc., on the different facets. It's almost organic. Yes, it has a very organic. Uh, now, in terms of availability and pricing, when will this watch be available? So this watch will start to be delivered this end of the year. Uh, we will, and then we'll continue. There is no timing, time limit for it. It's a non-limited. Uh, like I say, it's just limited to the to the time we can, uh, to the quantity we can produce, and we will be at uh, thirty-two thousand nine hundred uh, USD. Excellent, Bertrand. Thank you so much. Really appreciate Pleasure, that. Pleasure, team. Thank you for coming. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023. We're here at H. Moser & C. with CEO Edouard Melon and the Streamliner Pandemonium. This is the only watch piece unique combining a panda, a minute repeater, the Streamliner case, and elements of MBNF style. Edouard, tell us about the genesis of this piece. Huh. Well, you said a lot about it already. Thank you, Tim. But the genesis, I think, is more about the, the idea of collaborating again with MBNF. Remember, we did a, an amazing collaboration in 2020, which was, I think, one of the first collaborations in our industry, extremely successful in the middle of the of coronavirus, brought a lot of light to independent watchmaking. We all benefited from it. I think it was amazing, the right timing, even though we had a lot of doubts. And then with Max, we said, you know, one day we need to do it again. But it has to be one notch higher. And then came the only watch 2021, which was for both brands amazing. Like our uh, Endeavor cylindrical tourbillon fetched like 750,000 Swiss francs. Uh, Max Panda reached like 650, like crazy numbers that we both of us have, would have never dreamt of. And we said, what do we do next? You know, you, you always want to be in a positive dynamics. So I went to Max and said, hey, do you have an idea for the next uh, only watch? He said, yeah, we have something. I'm like, what if we do something together? He said, but what? And then we came up with a, with a drawing of, it was already a streamliner minute repeater. It's like, oh, this is pretty cool. And we started working on it. His team bro brought up the Panda and then bang, we got this amazing, unique piece. So now the watch you've got here is fascinating because it's kind of silly. Uh, Swiss watches are generally very serious things. This one features a panda on the dial, so you're off to a flying start. It is. I think it's a little bit of, I mean, what I like about this watch is it's innovative, it's creative, it's beautiful, it's technical. It has a little bit of the romantic, childish aspect, as you said, a silly aspect. I think it's, uh, it has a little bit of everything, and that's what makes this watch unique and beautiful. I would also say realistically, because there is no longer an SIHH, the kind of special watches you used to bring to the events, this feels like the heir to the legacy of things like the Garden Watch, like the Swiss icons. <laughs> this does feel like something from that line. What? Traditionally, when we did those, like the cheese watch, as you refer to, the Swiss Alp watch, the, the Mosa Nature watch, we always had a message. I think here the message was we want to, we want to help and you could just make a dial different or change the color or do something in the different material. No, with, with MBNF and Moser, you can expect like the craziest things. And that's why we spent hours and a lot of money in developing a movement that we will be using only once. 
I think that's that's the beauty of it, and that's maybe the message we want to share. It's not always about money. It's sometimes also about giving back, and that was the idea behind the project. Unfortunately, uh, there's been a bit of a setback on only watch, but who knows? In any way, we will use this watch for a good cause. If it's hopefully it's only watch. If it's yes. not, then it's going to be another good cause. And it's a fantastic watch because as silly as the panda is, it's a very serious piece of horology. Beautifully finished, exquisite movement, outstanding detail decoration, especially on the dial side where you've got that working bridge for giant balance and extended balance staff. You've got the overfoil hairspring. You've actually got two flat hairsprings. Hairspring. Of course, pardon me. This is upgraded over Ty legacy Typical machine. precision engineering Moser development, yes. So two hairsprings, 180 degrees out of phase, canceling the effects of gravity instantaneously. And obviously a beautiful miniature Peter with the hammers at the front, as we always do for Moser. But combining the two was a lot of work, a lot of work. We have our original movement at Moser was always miniature Peter tourbillon. And people say, oh, so you changed the tourbillon to the legacy machinist escapement. Well, yeah, it's not simple like this. It's hours and days and months of work and development to rework completely the movement. So it's a unique movement which will be produced only once, one watch ever. Now, in terms of the minute repeater and the streamliner, you got a sports watch and you've got a repeater. Does it have any water resistance? It's got a 5 ATM, which is pretty good. Yeah. We could have gone to 120, but then you don't hear anything. So we said, okay, let's 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 take something in the middle. So it's a watch that you can still, you know, take a shower with. Play, Considering, take care of it. Yeah, I mean, a minute repeater typically zero is the standard, so 5 well, ATM That's, that's the good. best song. <laughs> but yes, usually ours are 3 ATM. Uh, for the Streamliner, we, we decided to go a little bit higher just to make sure, you know, since it's a bracelet, you never know. The customer forgets he's wearing it, and then you can make a lot of damage if you, if you jump into the water with it. Now, let's say down the line someone is interested in uh, the follow up to this. You're not going to make the movement again, but there will perhaps be a streamliner minute repeater, as you mentioned. Something you're thinking well, about. Well, we have the streamliner, we have the minute repeater movement, so yeah, maybe one. So, where can they reach out if they want to know more about that or other Moser watches? Or well, they reach to you, or they reach to us. <laughs> Perfect, everyone wins. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, uh, as you know, we're all very uh, reachable. Uh, you go to Instagram on my account, the Moser account, um, info at, I get the emails, so I answer or I dispatch to whoever. Uh, Facebook, I mean, we have a great community on Facebook. We have a lounge in New York, Moserland, That's go true. and meet Claudio. Brand new. Yeah, you've Claudio. been there? Claudio is probably watching. Uh, yeah, great place if you want to discover the entire collection of, of Moser because many of them are not available, but you can go to the Moserland, Moserland in New York City and then try the watches. So yeah. reach out to all those guys and Thank they'll you be so much. This is just an awesome day. Thank you. Made so much better by good costs. Should we listen to it? Let's fire it up. I think it worked. Perfect. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023 with the man, the myth, the legend, the founder and the owner and the creator of the most popular video I've ever had on my channel at Resonance Watches, Benoit Minchins. Benoit, thank you Hi. so much. Thank you for coming. Now, what's always special about your watches is that you make them very friendly, very approachable, and when possible, as local as you possibly can. <laughs> this is the latest collaboration with Dubai Watch Week. Tell me about this Type 1 round and what you've done with the DX3. Sure, DX3, is, uh, yeah. it's, uh, it fits within a trilogy that we did to work together with uh, Siddiqui. Um, we started in 2019. Dx Bay, then Dx Two in twenty one, and now in twenty three, the three watches they all share a common DNA. Uh, the DNA is the Arabic pattern that we developed for the three watches, but it has the same pattern. But the application is always different, and the application is a mix between an Arabic art craft and a watchmaking craft. So the first one, for example, combines uh, arabesque and skeleton. The second one, Sadu, that's a weaving technique from here, and Guilloche. And this one, the last one, the one that we introduced during Dubai Watch Week 23, combines cloisonnage, that's a watchmaking technique, with pockets, with the mosaics in the Arabic world. 
And so in this watch, you have a, a pattern of different colors, different pockets of color that are structured like an Arabic pattern, um, but very subtle, of course. And, uh, and there, is a, there is a kind of logics uh, between them in the colors. So at the same time that you're using Cloisonne, you're also using elaborate superluminova. So the watch itself is highly reactive. Yep. Uh, how do you design this uh, in the mind's eye? How do you see these colors? In, um, you will see that they're not completely the same uh, because the, in Luminova you have different yes. uh, variations. Um, the idea here is, it, for us it was quite an obvious thing to do because basically all our hands, all the graphics on our watches are already like that. We've always done that that way. It's just that instead of the shape of a hand or, or number two, it's a triangle that we filled up with uh, luminous material. So the, the way we do it is exactly the same as we would do it before. It's just another shape. So for us, it's, it was nice to do it, and, uh, but, but not technically complicated or something like and, that. And as with enamel, you're filling these wells you've created in the dial, but instead of filling with enamel, you're filling with superluminova. We, we fill them with two layers. So it's first there's a layer of color, and then there's this, a layer of luminova on top of it. And that's how you get the effect. So you give the color, and then you give a translucent uh, layer of uh, luminova. So now moving on to a watch that has been in the collection for a while with the Type 3, but this Correct. is a fashion we haven't seen before. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about what's new on this variant of the Type 3. So it's called Eucalyptus. Um, and uh, we decided to do this because basically we did not have a real color on Type 3. We had a black one and a white one, but no real color. Um, I took this color uh, because it, it is very natural. And uh, as you see, because, thanks to the oil inside, it gives it a very pebble-shaped watch. It has a pebble-shaped design. Um, but by also using a natural color, it even gives it a more organic feel. And when you wear it, it feels very natural to you. It's a color that fits us. And so green's been very popular the last three years, but this is a very different kind of green. It's softer, it's more pastel, yep. uh, like you said, a little bit more organic. I think this is a green that's going to stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. And it is a thoroughly realized idea as the concept extends from the dial all the way to the strap. Tell me a bit about the strap. The strap is uh, basically, we use Alcantara. Uh, it's a very easy, maintainable material. Um, very strong also from a Martindale point of view, so from the rubbing. Um, and uh, it gives it also a very natural touch, natural feel. Um, you know, somewhere we want to make watches that are lovable. And uh, when you use materials that are lovable, that you like to uh, it touch, is incredibly to touch soft. them, it's soft. If the color is a bit soft, you get something that is very appealing to you, where you can create empathy with. Um, and that's really something uh, we're looking for. So we thought the color, the materials, everything is, of course, a whole. Uh, so it, it needs to match each other and be coherent. So now this is a new version of a watch that's still relatively recent in the catalog. Here you have the Type right. 8, but a new dial color and a new type of strap. Yeah. So the, the, it's called the Type 8. Um, it is a, our, let's say, our entry-level uh, watch. Huh? Um, and we introduced it this year with a, a Sage uh, dial. Um, what is particular with Type uh, 8, it is our third generation platform, so meaning that the way the discs are working is a bit different than the previous generations. It, it's all working on ball bearings, so uh, on the previous generations the main disc was on ball bearings, or is on ball bearings, uh, for example this one, yes. the main disc runs on balls, but the sub, the sub discs are traditional with an axle and two gears stones and, and a bridge. And yeah. Whereas this, the whole disc is on ball bearing, so the disc is the ball bearing, and so you get uh, you. That's why we can make these watches so thin, because the disc is hollow inside, because the the, the, the gear that drives the disc yeah. is on the outside and it's part of it. So, why do I say that? It's because we could reduce the split line half. So we went from five hundredths of a millimeter to two and a half hundredths of a millimeter on the Type Eight and on the Type 2, because this is an evolution on Type 2. I'm saying that is because for this watch, you know, the green parts are titanium parts. Here also, the green parts are titanium parts. For this watch, we developed a coating, special coating that we developed specially for Ressence, because it needs to be thin. But here, it had to be even thinner because of the ball bearings that are in touch with the material, with the color. Um, and so, 
we could develop a, this is a galvanic collar uh, that allowed us to have really only one micron thickness. So it did not have any influence on the work in the, in the functionality of the wash with these very, very tight uh, uh, tolerances. Uh, Benoit, that is absolutely awesome. It's a bit I, technical, I, I'm sorry. I, oh, no, 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 no. That, <laughs> I expect nothing less from this brand. But again, it's very technical, but you make it but seem it, very simple. Yeah. Exactly. So that's really the philosophy. Uh, we, we don't want to... We, many brands show the technicity and it's, it's intelligent to do it because you can show why it's expensive. Uh, but for us, it's, um, we have another philosophy. We look at watchmaking as a service that is provided by the watch. It's a bit weird for you maybe, but a watch is a service provider. And how do you uh, provide the service in the best way is to be as clear as possible as a watch, to in, uh, express the time. So all the things that you can take away will increase the functionality and so will increase the service. And by having a good service, you have a good relation with your watch. So that's the whole idea behind it. And of course, you come from an industrial design background, not from watchmaking, not necessarily from business per se, uh, but from the idea of organic intuitive design. And yeah. that sort of guides your philosophy. So I have to ask, because you're wearing the eucalyptus today, I do. is that a personal favorite? That's my watch, yeah. That is your personal favorite. Number zero. Favorite. Fair enough. <laughs> and if people want to learn about your timepieces, where do they reach out? Who do they contact? For, uh, for Dubai, it's with Siddiqui, of course. Outstanding. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Really Thank appreciate it. Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company at Dubai Watch Week 2023 with Erwerk. Uh, created by Martin Fry, designer, and Felix Baumgartner, watchmaker, Erwerk's been around since 1997. It was one of the original independents. Launching at Basel World in 1997, they presented the UR101 and the predecessor of the watch you see right here, because this is the UR102 Reloaded. So they were nicknamed respectively the 101, the Millennium Falcon, and the 102, the Sputnik. This is the Spud. It's a combination of black and steel with a titanium case back. And it actually expresses time in terms of the distance the Earth travels relative to the sun and the distance relative to the equator that the Earth rotates. You can see the scales in between the preceding and succeeding hours. And this is a very fascinating type of satellite display. When they first started, Erver didn't show the entire carousel. They used a very traditional wandering hours type of complication. So this was the beginning of that. This, of course, is the 102 Reloaded. So it's in the image of the original. It's not the original watch. This is a more modern, better finished, more durable version of the 102. About 40 millimeters in diameter, titanium on the back, 100 piece limited edition. Now, what we also have here is the spectacular UR100 Sumerian featuring all sorts of Sumerian scripts and decorations evocative of one of the Earth's earliest civilizations and reportedly the earliest civilization to mark and tell time. So you can see the spectacular graphics on this PVD blue case with the dial to match. This was a limited edition of 30 pieces and it continues the satellite display that Erwerk first proposed in 1997 at Basel World, and it's very simple to read. You just look at the hour and then the minute scale next to it. So for example right there, that is 7.30. As the preceding hours move off stage left, you can see the succeeding hour moves on stage right. A digital time system. Now flip it all over, you can see on the reverse there is a regulated turbine winding system. You see the little turbine that regulates the speed of the larger rotor. The idea here is to preserve the winding system. It energizes a Zenith Elite base that gives the watch 48 hours of power reserve. There are little windows in the flanks of the case. You can see we have a bubble sapphire. Uh, one gives you the distance that the Earth rotates relative to its axis, so the distance it turns in 20 minutes, and then the other gives you the distance the Earth moves through space in the same period of time. Now finally here we have the UR230. This is the successor to the 220 and it's actually the latest addition in a line dating back to the original 201. So what's different here now is that we have this lovely roadster style pop top. We have the carousel that gives you the time as ever. Again, we're looking at 4.30, that's the time. All of this is luminescent. There is a little on-off indicator for the winding system. You can actually turn off the winding system to preserve it if you're very violent, very vigorous, if you're undertaking a lot of activity. And then next to it, you can see that there's actually a system showing you the degree to which the winding system has been slowed. So between full stop and full wind, 
there are settings that allow you to reduce its winding efficiency if you think you may be overtaxing the mechanism. Now you can also see the turbines that regulate the operation of the automatic. You can see them through the base of the dial. This is the first time that you've been able to see the turbine mechanism from the dial side. You can see that this is much more than just satellite hour. Watch the hand. It is a retrograde and satellite hour. Flip it all over. Now you can see what I'm talking about when I talk about slowing the winding system or stopping the winding system, as well as the pneumatic turbines that will act as the sort of geared winding regulator. If you cut off air to the turbines, you slow the winding action. That's how this system works. And the watch is made of a combination of CPT carbon fiber and on the bottom, blackened titanium. This is the new Urwerk UR230 here at Dubai Watch Week 2023.